Hey, I'm Bo Blankenship. And I'm Field Williams. We're advisors with the Blankenship Group. We want to do a recap of Q1 and what the outlook looks like for 2024. We're just going to kind of dive in. So, so far in 2024, what are things that have stood out to you, some pitfalls we may have, and what's just kind of been interesting so far? Yeah, so for me so far this year, something that's interesting is, and I'm just going to hone in on this to start, the absorption rate gets talked about a lot. And in a healthy market, people say six months of inventory. And what that means is, if you didn't list any new inventory, you would sell out of what's currently on the market in six months based on the pace of sales that have been established. And so in our market, we've seen that absorption rate go from, you know, it probably got as low as a month or two, depending yeah. on the neighborhood, to two months, four months, six months, eight months. Now it's probably at about 11 months if you look at the market. But that's really twofold. I think it gets misquoted or misrepresented, and that means that transactions aren't occurring and that's not the case transactions are certainly slower i'm not trying to hide that yep. but when you combine lower transactions with more inventory that absorption rate moves very quickly which is why we've seen a lot of that and yep. i think that you know then you really have to to hone in on the neighborhood or the number of bedrooms or the property type or the proximity to the beach you know it's such a it's such a moving target when you really narrow down Definitely. And so with that being said, what are some of the hot areas or some things that you still see good transactions happening or some of the slower spots to give us kind of the outlook yeah. on that? If you ask me to pick some trends, I would say one that has remained consistent is that Alice Beach continues to do well. Yep. Even when other neighborhoods have slowed down, Alice Beach has remained resilient. So that high end luxury buyer is still there and those transactions are still happening. Yep. The other place we've seen it so far this year are in places like Water Sound Beach, where you have big homes, you can still rent, it's luxury property, and the beach is very protected. I think we've seen kind of, you know, some of the bigger luxury spenders seek that kind of, those kind of amenities out so far this year. Yeah, and I thought um, Alice Beach was gonna go down. I did too. And we were kind of waiting for it, like, boom. And it was slow, and we thought, all right, is this where the market turns? Yep. And then now they've been- They're still popping. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Um, so that being said, the planning community is still getting transactions, still getting um, you know, good sales prices. I think that's important what you just said. What we've seen, the other trend outside of what I've just said, the neighborhoods that have been established here, the ones that come to yeah. mind when someone who doesn't live here thinks of 30A, they yeah. think of Seaside, Watercolor, Rosemary, Alice, Seacrest, those neighborhoods. Yep seem to be doing the best right and especially in in different price points you know when you really break down these transactions uh those established neighborhoods have just continued to do well right and so on the opposite side what neighborhoods have struggled or what yeah. areas that you that do you think have struggled in 2024 and I, I hate to pick on a neighborhood but if you're if you're making me do so like newer communities on the west end of 30a that have maybe a little further beach access and you have a lot of product that's similar in a neighborhood. And that's, I'm not picking on a neighborhood. I could name six that mm -hmm. fit into that criteria. Um, another one that may, that's probably worth talking about is prominence just because yeah. people identify with prom prominence. And I'm talking mainly about the triplex units on the north side of 30A. If you look at those in the peak of the market, there were zero, maybe one, two, three that were active. Is that fair to say? Yeah. If you go look at that number now, it's probably between 25 and 30 the last time I checked. Right. So that's a, that's a significant difference. Right. But again, to not misquote the information, there have still been transactions in there. That's not two years of inventory. It's, right. it's still under a year of inventory. It's really closer to six months of inventory. Yeah. And in our peak, they were selling hours. Instant. Multiple, like not even looking Instant. at it. It was crazy. And, you know, those prices have maybe cooled off a little bit. Yeah. And, and people ask that. And, Yes, the peak, we are off the peak of those prices. Yes. But it's not a big, significant, right. you know. And we're not seeing sellers that have to sell. We're certainly seeing more motivation. Yeah. But the call I get all the time from buyers is, hey, I'm looking for the deal. I'm looking for the seller that has to sell. I'm looking for right. someone who, you know, cash makes a difference. Right. I'm not saying those don't exist, but very far and few between in the current market. And that's kind of like that million, million five price point, maybe yeah. seven million. So overall in the market, what price point are you seeing kind of flourish right now or get more action than, than others? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's probably on the lower end of the market right now for us, which is still you know over a yeah. million yeah, dollars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's just because it appeals to so many more people. Like those high end luxury transactions are happening, but there's also a lot of inventory between call it four and 7 million. Yep. Yep. And there's a lot of inventory on the lower end too, but with more shoppers, there's more demand and more activity. And I think that seems to have some traffic, but it depends on the neighborhood. Right. And I don't mean to talk out of both sides of my mouth, but no, yeah. you can pick another neighborhood that's in that price point that is pretty stagnant. Yeah. So it really, really it's depends. very pocketed. And that's what I'm telling both buyers and sellers. It's not like we can't talk about, we can talk about 30 as a whole, but so much of it in this weird place we live in, a hundred yards can make a massive difference Millions. on whether something sells or not. 100%. Yeah, and 100%. price. 100%. Um, so the people that are in that four to seven million range, what do you ultimately think happens? Do you think there's gonna be, because obviously rates are yeah. what they are. Do you think you know rates come down, price points go back up? Do you think, or is it just, going to cool down and we're waiting for a drop or what because a bunch of these people don't have to sell yeah right and i think we could we could talk about this from a lot of yeah. different angles yeah rates an obvious one yep rental rates the other obvious one yeah which you know if you look at the last two years we're off peak on rents yep so when you combine lower rents and higher rates if it's a pure investment play it doesn't pencil out like it did three years yep. ago that's not to say it doesn't work, but it's not the same as it was. And so I think to answer your question, if rates go down, that can change that picture. Yep. If rents go up, that can change that picture. Otherwise, I think you're going to see a continued softening of those price points in that range. Nothing dramatic, but, yep. you know, we're getting just, a new footing in that market. We're getting so much inventory in four to nine. Like a lot of spec builds that started two years ago that are now hitting the market. Correct. And um, so of those like spec builds, like talk to sellers, what stands out? Like what would make one sell versus another one in this market? Because there's a ton, right? Yeah. And we have multiple. And so like what is something that stands out? It's like, hey, that one's going to trade because of X. Yeah. I would pick two things right off the cuff. Okay. Proximity to the beach. Yep. And beach access. Yep. Very important, huge, especially at that price point. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, a certain amount of uniqueness will help that that product sell. It doesn't. I think you understand what I'm saying, but like, there's a lot of that product that's very similar. Yes. But when you get something that has spectacular views yep. or clearly, uh, you know, sophisticated architecture or something with the outdoor space that's dramatic, mm -hmm. those kind of differences can can be the difference definitely so your outlook on the market you know we've had a slower q1 we're kind of on pace a little bit with uh 2023 um as far as some of our pendings and stuff like that yeah but what do you see like what is your outlook on the rest of the year i know you don't have crystal ball but i do don't happens? and i think it's going to be interesting and i think it's still a little up in the air and i think you would echo the same thing we had high expectations for spring break yeah. and new buyers yep and we did see a big push for a week or two, yep. and it wasn't quite as large as we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, is the summer gonna continue the same way, or is it gonna be the normal seasonal push that we get in the summer? And if you made me pick, I think the answer is gonna be somewhere in between. Right. I think our market's gonna remain healthy. Right. I don't think it's gonna be dramatic either direction. Right. Um, but I think we'll see, continue to see transactions happen. We'll continue to see more inventory. Um, but kind of in a healthy way. And, you know, it's hard to like pinpoint it. And I'd say last week, what rates went back up? Or yeah, went right. up last and week so then, yeah. it was a bad point, but like, I feel like our phone rang more last week than it has. I agree. And I do weeks. think consumers are getting more comfortable with the idea with that what's going on. higher for longer, yep. right? Like that's what we keep hearing, higher for longer. And, you know, it still has to pencil out. It still has to make sense. Or people have to really want to be here. And I am as bullish our market as I am anywhere in the country. People still want to be here. Vacationers, full-timers, all of that. And, you know, I talked earlier about rents being lower. Mm -hmm. Most property managers would agree, if not all, that that's really a reflection of supply, not demand. So there's been so much new short-term rental supply yep. that that's what's brought it down. It's not that people don't want to be here. People are still coming here, yep. same number of people. Um, occupancy is still good. It's just there's there are more options to choose from. 
So if you're talking to a seller right now, what would you say, hey, list now, should I wait? You know, what, what are you telling people? Yeah, and I hate to sound like a broken record or say the same thing other people are saying, but I think you have to price with the market if you want to sell your house. Yeah. The days of testing the market, big number, let's see what action we get. You can do that, but it, it's typically not fruitful. Yeah. And then you start cutting price to see where the market is and things change. But two important factors along that same line. One, days on market doesn't matter like it did a year ago. I agree with that. People think days on market's this toxic thing. Our days on market has gone dramatically up with this new inventory. And so it's not something to be afraid of. Whereas two years ago, if it had been on the market for 40 days, something's wrong. Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. That's not the case now. Yeah. 100 days, 200 days, that's normal. Yeah. The other thing that's normal are price cuts. Yeah. Whereas it used to be an indication, hey, this seller has cut the price twice, he's desperate. That's not. That's not the case. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm talking to a seller, if you actually want to sell your house and you're willing to price with the market, you can still test the market a yeah. little bit and there's negotiation there. Yeah. But what we've talked about a lot is for whatever reason, buyers are still reluctant to make low ball offers most of the time, yeah. not always. Yeah. So it takes the seller getting to a price that's compelling to really right. pick up the activity. Right. And so what would you we, agree with that? No, 100%. Yeah. yeah. But the problem in some of it, it's so specific. Every community pricing it high versus low, like it's so. Pricing is tough right very, now. It's very difficult. Because like, oh, two, two doors down, got 1,300 bucks a foot. It's like, we're a brand new house. Maybe we can get 12. You know, it's like. And then you're like, hey, that was 12 months ago, 18 months ago. That was it, totally man. different. It's crazy. It's very difficult. For sure. So, you know, and we've had so few transactions overall in the market in these non plant communities. And there's a ton of inventory in these non plant communities, and so pricing those has become yep. difficult. And so we just have to kind of see what the, how the market reacts to some things, and it is a little bit of give and take, and kind of see. And there's something else I want to say about market data. It is so easy to manipulate market data. Oh, man. And I mean that in a good way and a bad way. But when we talk about absorption rate, I have a hard time talking about it because we can talk about, just as an example, we can talk about 30A as a whole. We can talk about just Rosemary. Mm -hmm. We can talk about just south side of 30A. We can talk about just three and four bedroom homes. Yeah. We can talk about just homes under three million, just yeah. homes between four and six million. I mean, we can slice this data so many different ways. To me, that's where it takes an experienced or seasoned real estate professional to yeah. be able to say, these are your true comps. Yeah. I know this is happening over here, mm -hmm. but you're looking at the data wrong. Yeah. This is what we need to be yeah. looking at. And sometimes that's neighborhood, sometimes that's price point, sometimes it's home size, it's yeah. just, it just depends. And it's, sometimes it's a super hard conversation to have with the seller, like, hey, I know you saw that one pinned in Rosemary for X, you're not Rosemary. I know like, you're 200 yards away, I'm sorry, different product. You are completely, you yeah. know, so like having those truthful conversations, and it can cost you a listing, it can cost you a buyer, whatever, sure. it's like, it's worth having, not, you know, waste everyone's yeah. time and not tell them something that's not, not accurate. And I will say like, you know, my activity's been good here lately, and mm -hmm. a lot of it's full time. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. So if you were going to be bullish on one community, or give me your top few communities. Yeah. You know, like what are you hottest on right now? You know what I'm hottest on right now, uh, and you're putting me on the spot here, but I'm a huge fan of Water Sound Beach. Yeah. Water Sound Maine, Water Sound Bridges. I'm just a big fan of the density they have and the home style there and the fact that it doesn't feel like a rental community but it is a rental community <clears throat> it's gated it's got great amenities just the whole i love water sound because you love it do you think that's why you he's done like three deals like for sure i mean like 10 million in the past few, i think i mean i think that's with anything you know yeah but like you're yeah. hot on it and you're, you're i believe in it yeah yeah but what? but i mean i also love rosemary yeah i also love Camp Creek, <clears throat> it really depends on what someone's looking for. It just so happens that I've had a few clients who Water Sound was a perfect fit here lately. Yeah. But I've also done stuff outside of Water Sound yeah, because sure. it's very specific. For to, sure. Yeah. I mean, you sold Cape in the Cape. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. so everywhere. So if, if you were an investor putting your money somewhere, where would you go? What price point would you build? Would you go smaller? Would you go bigger? Would you go Camp Creek? Would you go Origins? Would you go Point Washington? What would you do? I can't answer that. Dang. <clears throat> It depends on the priorities of the investor yeah. and how they're going to use the property. Is this a family legacy that you hope is worth more money in 10 years? Is this something that needs to throw off cash flow right now from rental? Yeah. Is this something you want to 
you have the patience and the stamina to build a house and you want to sell it in two years. You know, it just depends on the risk profile of the investor and what the goal is. That's good. Um, I know that's a cop out, but it yeah, really is just I mean, too broad of a- No, I get it, I get it. Yeah. Um, what else? Give me something else, another nugget. Another that's nugget. Um, I just think summer's gonna be, I don't want to say telling, but <clears throat> You know, typically we can feel a bump in the yeah. beginning of summer. I don't disagree with that. <clears throat> and is that activity going to translate to contracts? So our typical, and I've tracked, I track all our sales year over year for the past. I don't know we've been doing this nine years, something like yeah. that. And I, I track our sales since February. Typically, we're closing most yeah. July, uh, October, and November. Those are yeah. typically. And those are summer sales that in a close. So just take July. That stuff that should go under contract in the next, <clears throat> in May. Yeah, yeah. So we hope we'll see. And I yeah. think we've seen our phone picks up, pick up. Um, uh, dude, what else was going to ask you? That's what I would put in a nutshell, though. When people ask me about the market, <clears throat> I'm very honest. The market is a lot slower than it was, which is to be expected. Yeah. I mean, with with what we are and how we operate and being second home and vacation and rental and all these things, the market is much slower, but it is not dead. And yeah. there are still plenty of transactions happening. There are still good deals to be had. There are still people, yeah. you know, willing to sell and people willing to buy. And I'm encouraging my buyers, like, hey, let's make an offer, you know, and let's just kind of see what happens. So I still think it's a good time to buy. And when rates do go down, I do think price points are going to, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe not. But yeah. I do think there's a decent chance that price points will <laughs> go up when rates go down. But, you know, no one knows. So I still am encouraging people to make offers yeah. and it's not dead by any means. What transactions have been interesting to you in the first quarter? <clears throat> um, been interesting to us in the first quarter. Um, you know, not, there's nothing like crazy. Like we haven't had, you know, last year we had the 24 million, the 19, the 19, yeah. like the 18. That's like a good point. The, all of those are like super interesting. And there's a lot of those listings. And there's a lot of those. I mean, there's a ton of 15 plus listings. Right? Yeah. And so they're not moving. And so that's not you know yeah the, those haven't happened but what's kind of interesting to me and obviously i'm biased is camp creek has kind of had a nice little surge yeah. i think like several have sold in the mid fives we got a few coming up in the sixes it's, so that's kind of had a surge non-rental non-rental you know great amenities great beach uh great community i think those have been interesting to me um i'm trying to think what else i mean not Here's another question. What are you telling, <clears throat> obviously Blank Chip Group has a lot of listings, yeah, current yeah. active listings. Yeah. What are you telling sellers when they say, hey, it's been 100 days, it's been 200 days, why isn't my home selling? What can we do different? What do we need to do? What's the message? Um, I'm telling people this is just a byproduct of the market. Like yeah. if we, we have the biggest megaphone down here, so we're blasting it everywhere. We have the biggest reach, biggest database most buyers most buyers like we have the biggest megaphone here so we're blasting out everyone's going to see it yeah. right um all our contacts everyone so it's a product of the market so we've got two levers and i talked to you about or yeah. you, me and you talk about this it's like you have price you can pull yeah or you have patience and you Absolutely. have and that's really your two things yeah. like yeah we're going to blast out yeah we're going to do the open houses yeah we're going to do the mailers yeah we're going to Get a syndicated that's world. happening regardless regardless yeah. it's wall street journal it's everywhere right it doesn't matter like we're doing that yeah you know do we have the ability to pivot people from home to home yes that's what we do and that's what we do best but it's like you've got two levers you can actually pull you can either wait or you can cut that thing and another thing on price if you're a five million dollar house yep the fifty thousand dollar price cut waste of time waste of time yeah i mean if you are i mean it's got to be drastic yeah and that's why i tell people like oh let's reduce it this it's like I mean, we can blast out and get, you know, yeah. whatever, and like try to get, you know, fresh on the hot sheet and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, if you're really going to cut it, you need to cut it. Yeah. And so. It needs to make a difference. Yeah. That first number needs to To change. get someone from not interested to interested is typically yeah. a fairly significant yeah. price cut. And I would say a buyer that's <laughs> looking at a $7 million home will look at one that's listed at 7.7. Seven. Yeah. Like, would you agree with that? Yeah, for or sure. Seven, eight, seven, nine. Yeah. You know, it's like. Which makes sense. The higher up you go, the less. Yeah. Whatever. But like. If that thing's now listed at six nine nine, it's a lot more interesting. So yeah. seven nine nine, in my opinion. Now the guy who's willing to spend five five might look at it. Might look at it. Yeah, right. It's kind of in that that realm. Um, what else do you have? What about buyers? So same question for buyers. Hey, Bo, we've been looking for the last year. Yep. We see what's going on. <clears throat> Should we continue to wait? Should we be aggressive? I'm telling people 
to, I mean, it is technically a buyer's market. Yeah. Right. And so I'm telling people, and we've got several offers right now, go ahead and make your offers and let's see what we can do. Right. Yeah. And we've gotten situations where there's been multiple offers. So you had to put your best foot forward, which is really interesting. In the last two weeks, we've had at least five multiple offers. Which is unbelievable. Which is unbelievable to me. Yeah. And we've got stuff that's, you know, slow as, oh, get out. And it just shows when the house is right, when the price is right, yeah. <clears throat> the buyers are there. Yep. And so what I'm telling buyers is like, let's look at everything and let's make offers. Yeah. Like, let's see, because there's some people that are going to want to play ball more than others. There's going to be some people like, hey, I've got a 2% interest rate. I don't have to sell. I'm not moving, you know, 20 grand yeah. off my price. It's like, okay, well, then that's a waste of time. But we're still showing and we're still encouraging people to make offers because I do think ultimately, in the long run that this is a area that is going to appreciate people are still going to move to florida this is still For going to be sure. a safe tax haven this is going to be a place people want to be so ultimately i think this market is going to increase and i want to say that that's part of a real estate advisor's job knowing agents knowing homes knowing activity you're there's no one better than you at hey you know i like this house it's listed for three million bucks i want to offer two two you're quick to say waste of time waste they're of time. not selling it like <clears throat> as a courtesy to yeah. everyone involved yeah. but you also know hey i don't think even if it's one of our listings hey we don't have a good handle on where the seller is here yeah. let's make them say no let's see what they say yeah see who's willing to play worst ball thing's gonna happen. yeah right and so try to get everyone a good deal try to get both parties to agree and get over the finish line yeah so um what else do you have i think that's it um you know just having a lot of quite frankly, tough conversations with sellers who expect their home to sell and having a lot of active conversations with buyers, but not with a lot of urgency typically. Right. <clears throat> that's kind of what I'm seeing. No. So we still believe in this market, still believe in this area. Um, that's kind of it for this year so far. Recap, uh, please reach out to us if you guys have any questions about selling, buying, anything like that. We'd love to help you. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys. We're dissecting that data. The way we said you can cut it a hundred different ways. To me, that's one of the most important things we do right now. And that's relevant, whether you're a seller or a buyer and you know, we kind of nerd out on these conversations. We love to talk about it. This is what we do all day, every day. So yeah, we're always available. Yeah. One few more questions. Corvette or Ferrari? <clears throat> it should be a no brainer. If I'm spending my money, uh, Corvette, if it's your money, a Ferrari. If, if you could be a pro at any sport, what would it be right now? Pickleball. <laughs> hey, All got right. the bug. <laughs>